Well, this time of year, my nemesis is white fly. So I want to talk about that today, along with how I deal with other insect pests, things like spider mite, white fly, thrips, uh, roly polies, how I deal with those kind of pests in the garden. Now, right now it's late September and I'm really pretty conservative about dealing with any kind of pests because I know that a hard freeze is not too far in the distant future. I also wanna be really careful because right now is when swallowtail butterflies and monarchs are traveling through lots of hummingbirds, lots of pollinators, and I wanna be very mindful of them. So right now what I try to do is be as targeted as possible, addressing what issues I have, uh, but very selectively, not just a, a broad swath of insecticidal soap across the entire garden. So here are some of my favorite products. You guys, if you have recommendations, please put them in the comments below what has worked for you um, and whether or not it's, it's organic. I do try to be pretty much almost 100% organic in my garden. So let me start out with what I am using right now and what there is still kind of a perfume of in the air and that is neem oil. Now someone was just saying and asking me what do I use for white fly? Well this time of year I am using neem oil. She was saying that it can be pretty expensive and it can be so I always buy it in a concentrated form and then I just just mix up my own in this is actually this is a Dr. Earth product this also works well but when it was empty I just filled it up with some neem oil spray and this is what I'm using on white fly right now but again I'm using it selectively so if I see a plant that has an issue with it I will spray that plant but I am not giving total coverage to the entire area because I don't in any way want to sacrifice any pollinators to my neem oil. So that is what I'm using a lot of right now. Now, I do not find this scent pleasant. Some people do. For me, it kind of gives me a headache. So I try to spray after I'm finished doing my work in the area rather than before. Um, Another problem that I'm having this time of year that, again, I'm addressing pretty conservatively are budworms. Now, budworms are the worms that eat holes in, say, your geranium, your flowering or pelargonium flowers in those buds. I've seen them on some of, some of my scented geraniums. I see them on salvia forensia. They're just bud worms and they, you can sometimes see that telltale excrement that they leave, which is just little pinhead dots of black. And that's how you know that you've got a cabbage or a, a bud worm problem in addition to the fact that you've got holes in your buds. So there are a couple of different things that you can use for that. I typically tend to use this time of year a dust. Now, there are various forms of what I call um, BT. It's a biological insecticide. It's uh, a stand-in for bacterial thuringiensis. You can buy it in a concentrated form as thuricide, and this is a liquid, and you can spray it. But I have found that I get a little bit more, uh, again, a conservative, targeted uh, approach to those budworms if I use a dust. Now the dust is called dipel, or I, I, I've never known. If you know how it's pronounced, let me know. It's either dipel or dipel dust. And this is typically what I use. It comes in a large container like this. So what I do, because I find when it comes in a canister that the canister always somehow gets wet and the powder solidifies inside it. So I don't like to use the cardboard canisters on many products, but this uh, for this, what I do is I decant it into just an old spice jar. And that way, when I've got a bud, for example, sometimes they'll even attack zinnias, I will then go to a bud and I will just sprinkle, let me get out the sprinkle part, 
then I just sprinkle directly on the bud and the leaf and that area, but I'm not putting it over the entire plant. Now, some of you probably will tell me that you do douse the entire plant. I don't, again, because I want to make sure that I'm only getting the nasty caterpillars and not the good ones. I think there are quite a few um, swallowtail caterpillars that are out now munching on parsley and dill and some other things, and I really want to be very careful that I don't attack them in any way. So this is how I address budworms and really any kind of chewing caterpillar. Um, I have also a problem with scale, and I did a video where I just dug out uh, a euonymus, which is notorious for being susceptible to scale. In recent years in Oklahoma, even crepe myrtle has had a problem with scale. So what I try to do is prevent that at the front end by using a dormant oil spray in the late winter. And it will tell you on the label exactly what the conditions are that make it appropriate for spraying. There are certain, you don't wanna spray when it's too hot or when it's too cold, but what this does is it kind of acts like a surfacant and I believe it just suffocates the scale. So multiple applications of this are always a good thing. It also is helpful with spider mite um, for both, let's see it says scale, other listed insects, on ornamentals, flowering shrubs, shade and fruit trees. You always want to do your due diligence and make sure that what you're spraying on is not susceptible or vulnerable to whatever spray you're using. So it's always helpful to read what's in the back. Now, someone could make a whole lot of money if they would put this stuff in larger print and if they would figure out another device to use besides these very annoying plastic fold-out things, which always somehow get destroyed and then you have to go online and check it out. So there's a shout out to manufacturers. You can make a lot of money if you are a little bit more considerate of your consumer. So that is dormant oil spray. Now, earlier in the season, when I notice that pests are just starting to take hold, uh, munching grasshoppers, spider mite is just starting to take hold, white fly, then I might do a little bit more broad spectrum spray in the entire potager or where I am. Um, again, rather selectively, but I just like these hose end sprayers. And there are a number of different organic uh, earth safe insecticides that you can use. Most of them are a variety of insecticidal soap, but they are safe to use in the garden and around pets. And application just couldn't be easier. And I am all about ease because I hate spraying. So anything that will make this kind of onerous task to me easier is something that I am worth spending more money on. Now, if you had a really large garden, which I do not, then you might want to get a concentrate, maybe even a, a service that uses insecticidal soap or a spray. But for me, this tends to be the most efficient. And there are various Again, various different brands. This one is Monterey. It contains Spinozad that also is helpful in fighting foliar feeding worms, thrips, leaf miners, other listed pests. Again, try to determine and diagnose what your pest is and then get a remedy that is very specific to that pest. Now, if I've got slugs and snails, in that case then, I use Sluggo, and Sluggo is, is pelletized, um, what is it, pelletized iron phosphate. And it is safe to use around pests, around pets, though I've heard some people still always say you need to be careful about that. I don't have any pets, so it's not problematic in my garden, but it is garden safe, can be used around pets and wildlife, and I find it very effective. Now, this is not inexpensive, I don't think, because you typically, you either have to spend more on the front end for a variety that is more rainproof, 
or you can spend less and then you have to apply it more frequently. So what I try to do is use this in early spring before everything has really thickened up and leafed out. That way you have a really good clear um, surface area upon which to spread this and you kind of can nip them in the bud at the front end. So I haven't had nearly as much of a problem since I started using this and start out by using it in early spring. Um, yes, you can use the beer traps and all of that kind of thing, but that's a, maybe a little bit more work than I want to put into it and I prefer to save my beer for drinking for myself. Um, another product that I do not have here, but is it's a Dr. Earth product, I believe. No, I take that back. It's a Captain Jack's product that is a dust that I find very helpful. Again, it's organic and I find it very effective against sow bugs and roly polies and certain other leaf eating insects. And it is just, I, I use it so often that I've used mine up, but I will try to put a link below to all of these products. You can get, I think, all of them off of Amazon, and I know I'm not always very good um, about immediately putting the links on, but this time, um, Stuart, my buddy, is gonna take a picture of this, so I'll have all of them, and I can put in all of the links at the same time. Um, an another thing about Stuart, be careful backing up Stuart, I, ha I, I have to kind of laugh. Someone made a comment that I shouldn't be so mean to Stuart, and they, I think they meant it seriously. Um, let me just say that Stuart is like, I had four brothers and I have two sons, and I love all of them dearly as I love Stuart. We have a great time together. Um, to me, it is a demonstration of affection to chastise someone or to tease them. So don't ever think that I am really being mean and Miss Bossy Pants to Stuart. When we're not on camera, he is the same way to me and it's a sign of, of endearment. Stuart, is that true? I love you too. <laughs> So, so, um, so that's just my way of showing affection to the males in my life. Um, like I say, I have four brothers and they, they too suffer a lot at, um, at my sometimes sharp tongue. So that is how I handle pests in my garden. I hope that it is helpful to you. If you know of other organic products that work really well for you, then please share them. And typically one more thing, before I really spray anything with any kind of pesticide, organic or not, I try just physically removing them either by examining the foliage very carefully. It's how I got rid of all of the bagworms inside this arborvita um, by looking for caterpillars, by looking for snails and slugs. And if I see a white fly infestation or something, what I'll always do first is just a strong jet of water. So physical removal and IDing them, identification, and physically removing them is a good way to start. And it's also a good way to get a, a um, control of the product and the problem before it gets out of hand. So I hope that is helpful to you. Check out the links below. And now I am going to spread some neem oil in here because I'm finished with this video.